Hello again, digital makers. Welcome back to Digital Making at Home. This week's episode is going to be awesome, barring any unforeseen technical hiccups. If you haven't already, say hi in the chat and let us know where in the world you are. I'm Mr. C, coming to you live from Cambridge in the UK, and back with us once again is the charismatic Christina. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm joining from Nebraska in the USA, and thank you to everyone joining us once again for another great episode of Digital Making at Home. Great to see you back, Mr. C. Thanks. I had a few technical glitches last week, but you crushed it with Becky and I'm back this week for an amazing episode. Ready and raring to have another go at showing the folks at home how to make an awesome light up fabric project with Scratch and GPIO. And we're also speaking with an e-textile expert, Jessica, today. So she'll be able to shed some more light for us on working with fabrics and tech. I know. I'm super excited. We already have lots of folks in the chat early. Hello to Andrew from Maryland, USA with us on YouTube. Great to see you getting involved already. Welcome. We're so excited to have you all in the conversation. Absolutely. And for those of you who are with us for the first time this week, welcome. Thanks for coming along. Digital Making at Home is all about getting young people like you to become power users in the 21st century by learning to create things with technology. Every Wednesday, we chat with brilliant inventors and makers from all over the world. We create cool things together. We see amazing digital making projects from people just like you. We love having all of you here with us each week making stuff. We broadcast every episode live to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, and we can see your comments in the chat on all of those platforms, and we love hearing from you during the show. So please feel free to join in and ask questions, make a suggestion, or just give us your opinion in the chat. Yes, and hello, I see Larry on YouTube in Canada. I see Stefan in South Africa, Chafia, Tunisia, Ali, Iraq, Slim on Facebook. Hello, welcome. Daniel, howdy right back, partner. Hello, Ronnie. This is so great to see folks. We get your messages and we'll definitely try and get back to you during the show if we can. But as you see, like we've got a bunch of folks in, so it's really exciting. Also, make sure to like and subscribe or head to rpf.io slash sub to get our content as it comes out. When you subscribe, you join a growing community of digital makers. And we've almost hit 2,500 subscribers, which is amazing. Awesome. I think we're just a few folks away. So let's like let's get to 2,500 a day. And like I can't even imagine what we can do if we get to 10,000. Make sure you're subscribed and let us know what you think. Like, how should we celebrate 10,000 subscribers? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And shout outs to Good88 Luck and Annie, some of our most recent subscribers. Thanks for being the newest members of Team Raspberry Pi. So, Christina, should we get Jessica on now and have a chat with her about e-textiles and like shed some light on what they are? Yes. Come on, Jessica. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hello. How are you doing, Jessica? Welcome, welcome. We're so excited to chat with you. Thank you for having me. Now, Jessica, we mentioned you know a lot about e-textiles. Okay. Can you explain to our viewers like what is e-textiles? Uh, yes, I, I should be able to do that. <laughs> um, so e-textiles means, well, the e stands for electronic um, and textiles are fabrics. Usually that means clothing. It can also mean your curtains. Um, they're everywhere in our lives. Um, so usually what it means is how do we put electronics inside our clothing? Um, and that can be to make it light up, to make it make sound, heat up, change color, or maybe to sense things like measure your temperature or track how you're moving or that kind of thing. Oh my God, that's really neat. How did you get involved in this? Um, that's, I guess, a long story, but uh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> uh, well, I liked to sew a lot as a kid. Um, so and I used to embroider, things like this, um, <laughs> things I like. Um, and then I studied physics at university but I didn't really like electronics. Um, and it wasn't until uh, years later when I was watching random videos on YouTube and I saw a video by uh, last week's guest, actually Becky Stern. Um, and she was making an LED blink with this ooh, microcontroller, <laughs> the LilyPad Arduino. Um, and that just seemed really cool to me because I knew how to sew and it seemed uh, like a fun thing to work with electronics. Um, and then it kind of spiraled from there. Um, now I'm doing a PhD in um, e-textiles. That's incredible. I, I saw, I just saw the cake, the embroidery, and that reminded me of <laughs> Becky Stern. And for you to say that you saw her and coming in, like that led to you doing a PhD now in this? It's all, it's all her fault. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love that so much. Shout out to Becky. And make sure if you haven't checked out that episode, check it out. It's on um, at rpf.io slash home. All of our past streams are there. And we talked with Becky last week. That's incredible to hear that she was an inspiration. She inspired me. Like It was really fun to chat with her. So when, cool, like, um, yeah. I was going to say, I'm really bummed I missed out on that conversation, getting kicked out of it last week. I was very disappointed. I really wanted to talk to Becky. It's sort of like, a bit sad. I mean, it's okay. you've done a lot of really cool stuff. Like I've seen a lot of really cool projects that are on your website and all the things that you've produced over the last like couple of months and years. I mean, how do you see things like e-textiles benefiting society, making the world a better place? Like there's so many broad applications for it. Like you say, it's in everything in our lives. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's kind of the topic of my research for my PhD. Um, so I'm working with a company called Chimera. They're based in the UK too. Um, and they're trying to make smart textiles, smart garments uh, for sports and healthcare. Um, so on the sports side of things, you might want to track an athlete's movement to see how they're performing. And then maybe you can find ways to improve that. Um, or you could also check to see that they're okay. Say something like rugby obviously is pretty um, heavy contact. Um, so if you had sensors embedded in your, in your clothing, you'd be able to immediately tell if someone's been injured and, and needs to come off. Um, and on the medical side of things, um, if you can imagine a future where our medical devices are in our clothing, um, it would make life for people who are suffering from all kinds of illnesses way easier. So you wouldn't have to be constantly going into hospital, getting attached to big bulky devices. They'd be able to just have their clothing, either monitor them or hopefully deliver a treatment as well. Very interesting. Oh, and so yeah. is there a big difference between things like e-textiles and wearables or like smart clothes and things like that? Are they the same thing or are they like different branches of the same thing? They they overlap. So there's things which are um, wearable electronics and are also e-textiles or there's things like say a Fitbit is wearable, but it's not made of fabric. So it's not an e-textile, but they're all kind of terms that people use to mean the same thing and because it's all quite new as well i think nobody's really decided on what it should be called <laughs> definitely so cool. i have to say we've got folks from all over the world saying hello to us jessica so miriam in dublin ireland supreet oh, on twitch that's Thanks where i'm so from oh cool, nice. I'm cool. From Hi, miriam. <laughs> Hi. hello miriam we've got um jinx um hello from chicago um miroslav on facebook from on the check and yeah this is oh it's so amazing to see hello ciao from italy hello kevin in the usa and california thank you all so much for connecting us let us know if you have any questions for jessica in the chat absolutely yeah chime in guys let us know if there's anything you'd like to know about e-textiles that's really cool and so are there things that you're working on at the moment um jessica that are like you can talk to us about or something cool mm -hmm. that you've got coming up uh yeah so at the moment i'm working with um flexible electronics so i have some I work with these kinds of plastics. Uh, this is capped on, it's a flexible plastic. This one is the same, except it's got metal on the top. And what you can do with those is make uh, flexible, this is just an LED strip, but you could put any kind of circuitry on it. Oh, cool. You can see, um, I've got another one with a different color. So I'm just gonna struggle to connect the battery now. Um, this one's green. Um, so there's lots of ways to make e-textiles. Um, some people work with conductive threads and fabrics. I have some of that stuff too, because it's what I used to work with. Um, but I use different types of printers at the moment um, to print um, with inks with silver in them. Uh, and then the idea is that we can make these flexible circuits and then put them inside clothing to do different That's amazing. Some of my um, favorite things is playing with like bare conductive paint as well. Um, hmm. And like wearable thread are things I've like I've played with before and like taught lessons with and stuff like that. I think e-textiles is like, super exciting and it's so fun and it's a like really approachable thing to do like with a very little amount of time you can make like wearable technology and things like that i think that's super cool i mean looking at these tattoos and things that you had in those pictures there that we were seeing like what was the idea behind those like the skin electronics that you were making because that's a really uh, interesting one sure. uh, that coincidentally i used the bare conductive paint uh, for that um so this was part of a course i did um in Amsterdam, although it's a global course called Fabric Academy, which is this like experimental course where you learn about textiles and technology. Um, and we did this module on skin electronics. Um, so I I really like sci-fi and um, I look weird fantasy. So um, I wanted to make this uh, thing where you'd have touch sensors on your skin. Um, these shapes are called Lissajous curves. They're a mathematical shape that I think is really nice. Yeah. 
Um, so it's a piece of silver fabric, and then I made a stencil and put the black is bare conductive paint. So that's conductive. Um, so then when you touch it, it's connected to a little um, Arduino, um, and then it turned lights on and off. So cool. um, it's so cyberpunk. Yeah, I love this cool so thing. much. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I yeah, like, like sci-fi stuff. Yes, it's like it's really but cool. Yeah, like on that the sci-fi fantasy angle as well. I really loved your modular armor, the way that that all like linked together, those interlocking sort of like tessellating plates that linked together. Mm -hmm. That was super cool. I think that might be my favorite thing that you did is the tessellating mm -hmm. armor. What was, what was the idea behind that? Like, how did you come up with the concept for that? Because I that just blew me away when I saw it. I thought that's such a simple and brilliant idea. Uh, that was another um, another project for that course, Fabric Academy, um, and the idea behind it is actually to make modular clothing. So you have instead of a pattern that you cut out of fabric, and then you have um, bits left over that you have to throw away. How can you make clothing out of these small shapes that stick together, and then maybe you can have less waste fabric, um, or you could give someone like a kit of just the shapes, and then they could make whatever clothing they want out of that. Um, and it was autumn when I was making it and I wanted to do something around autumn leaves. So I made these shapes that um, kind of look like maple leaves and then they tessellate, which means they fit nicely together. So you can cut a load of them out of a piece of square fabric and have very little waste. And I spent like, I think three solid days connecting them into, um, into a garment as my roommate's cat helping me as well. Or not <laughs> helping me. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. Not helping. <laughs> I love that point you made about about like wa like wasting and trying to not waste fabric. That's something like recently I've been sewing a lot of masks and trying to find patterns where similar to what you had um, earlier. We saw having the patterns of your leaves that were just that were so connected that yeah, you don't waste fabric. You don't waste uh -huh. like, and that's such a hard thing with fashion with sewing. So that's a really neat um, part of this, and it's also beautiful. It's it very is, beautiful. It? Yeah. yeah, the colors yeah. there. I love it. I want to do it. I want to try and make a suit myself now. I've seen it done. I think I think I can like I'd give it heaps of time, but I'd love to give it a crack with some fabric and see if I could pull make my own like shirt of mail or something. That'd be amazing fun. The, the design for that and actually a load of other ones made by um, uh, friends of mine are all online. Um, you can probably amazing. find it through that website, but um, it's all open source. Awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a look then. I'm going to try and do that because we've got the laser cutter in the office, Christine. I'm going to jump on that laser cutter and see if I can make myself like a, an armored shirt. It would be perfect for my sword fighting game if I could Quite. make it out of like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like, it would be gonna, perfect so for the sword fighting game. <laughs> Hold on, what's it's, this? Oh, oh he's going he's gonna to find something. <laughs> All right, what's he got? Oh, and he's, he's got the sword. You just need the armor. Right. You just need the so armor. So this is condu conductive tape, Jessica, right, wrapped around mm. this sword with like a wire that goes back here. And I want to run it back to a conductive plate, like a, a basically like a breastplate that I would mm -hmm. have. And so if you and I were sword fighting, when I touched your breastplate, my avatar on the screen would like Monty Python style start losing limbs and things like that until oh. the fight is over. So that's that's my current work in progress. <laughs> but I think that suit of mail would be so much fun to try and make that as well. That would be really cool. That's so good. <laughs> that was amazing. You just, I love it. I love it. Uh, Jessica, I know we've, um, you mentioned to us that you've done like outreach, outreach mm -hmm. work, excuse me, teaching other people about this exciting technology. If someone wanted to get started, I know for you, you were inspired by Becky Stern. Now, what advice do you have for a young person who's trying to get started in playing around with electronics and textiles? Uh, well, the good news is there's loads online about how to get started um, and a lot of electronics hobby shops, of which there are like a bunch in the UK and in the US, um, sell starter kits for textiles, which will give you like a little bit of um, conductive thread that you can sew with. Um, you can do projects with Arduino and Raspberry Pi um, and conductive thread, but I think a good place to start is just sewing a circuit maybe with some conductive thread. Um, and a couple of LEDs. This is a cat badge. I'm putting it in front of my face. That I made for a, a workshop I did with some kids um, <laughs> years ago. <laughs> what do you think? That's so cute. <laughs> so um, underneath the hood, there's. Oh, yes, show um, us. This is a little um, battery holder for a coin cell battery. And then there's two LEDs. And basically, just the, I mean, the batteries and the LED, the battery and the LEDs have a positive side and a negative side. And you're just sewing uh, to connect. The negative side of the battery to the negative side of the leds and vice versa anyway i'm sure you can find a tutorial the battery holder looks like a cat <laughs> um, yeah it's like a little evil cat i think the workshop was at halloween so i wanted something slightly possessed yes um, yeah 
Uh, but then you could use something like that and put it on your bag if you're cycling or walking at night as well. So mm -hmm. it, it does have practical uses. Oh, Very of course. Cool. <laughs> of course. If someone, if, they, if you don't have um, some of these materials, is there anything folks can use at home to get started? Uh, yes. Uh, so another thing I've been experimenting with is trying to use tin foil. Oh, neat. <laughs> Getting confused by what side I want. So <laughs> oh, uh, I've got a battery here. That, oh, so this um, this is just tin foil rolled up and then flattened. And then I've sewn around it with some normal thread. And then I've got some LEDs and coiled up the legs so they sit on the um fabric oh, cool. so you can sew onto them and then it yeah one of them kind of works it's a little bit dodgy but i kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah you can just use tinfoil you can use anything conductive um that you can find if you have some wire that's flexible you can stitch that onto fabric as well um and yeah you can kind of make use of whatever you've got so cool. Wow, I love that. Oh, well, we have a, a couple minutes left. Jessica, what, what is next for you? Like, what are you hoping to do with like your PhD? Where are you going to take it? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, I've kind of never known what I'm going to do next. I've always sort of followed Me too. what I'm interested in <laughs> and asked like, you know, is, is this still what I want to do or, or what else might I want to do? Um, I've never, well, I've always kind of had a plan, but it, it always changes, um, but that's worked for me. So I'm in the, I've two, two-ish years left of my PhD, so I have a lot more research to do. Um, uh, I'm working on a project with some colleagues in my department, Department of Engineering at Nottingham Trent University. <laughs> I better not forget to say that. Yeah, you um, shout out, shout yeah. out. Um, which is, we're very interdisciplinary. Like I, I met a robot going up and down the halls last week called Caroline. Awesome. Um, but there's um, people doing biomedical research, um, researching people's comfort in airplanes, um, but also sports science. So I'm working with them to make a cycling suit that has temperature sensors in it. So that's Super my- cool project at the moment yeah so we'll see projects in the olympics or something in the future right? that'd be super cool oh that'd be really yeah <laughs> and i love what you said too about like you 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 evaluate right you ask yourself like am i passionate about this am i interested in this and that that is advice in itself right like you're an explorer you're curious and i love that like it, do, it doesn't need to have a strict plan right there's just so much happening in the world so much advancements in technology i think it's a great way to approach it like who knows what the world is going to be like when you're done with your phd so having mm -hmm. knowing like to being true to yourself that's really incredible and i appreciate that advice to wrap up we've got well, i'm going to ask you a question from our friend on twitch jinx is asking do you have a particular favorite best working conductive thread any recommendations you can Great make for question. folks getting started oh i think uh so the stainless steel conductive thread um which is by adafruit but you can get it in a lot of places is good um it's good because unlike silver conductive thread, it doesn't kind of um, oxidize, go bad over time, um, but it's not too kind of gnarly and naughty to work with. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite, I think. Awesome. And you can use it in a sewing machine as well, which is handy. Oh, oh that is noted. Handy. Yeah, that and thank you, Jinx. That's the, that's the bottom thread question. for anyone who knows. <laughs> Oh, noted. Oh, gosh, you're, you have so much information, Jessica. I hope we can bring you on again. Thank you so much for sharing. We I, I learned so much about the world of Eek's Textiles. Yeah, I'm yeah, so excited. Yeah. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, we'll see you soon. Awesome. Good luck. Bye. Catch you later. Bye. Oh. Just, you know, so much about e-textiles. It's like a whole new world of invention that's just opened up. And the idea of being able to use it in a sewing machine or like an overlocker or something would be super cool. That oh. Absolutely, like the like the mix of like the soft fabrics and the twinkly electric lights, and you can also hear Cassie's in the background. She's yeah, really yeah. excited about it. <laughs> like it was, it was really neat for me to see as someone who's always loved sewing and like fashion to be able to bring that in. So absolutely, yeah, yeah, really yeah. Cool. and like the, the the combination of like electronics and the soft fabrics and those things is like which the thing I like is it's kind of steampunky. It's like mixing those electronics things with those sort of like comfort human type parts of things that we have, which is really nice. So um. I've got my pie here on the workbench ready to walk through blinking an LED for everybody. Did you want to crack on with that? You ready? Yeah, let's do it. I've got some materials here. What do folks at home need? Okay, so um, since we're using GPIO pins for this one, um, you'll need your Raspberry Pi. Uh, you'll need an LED, which I have here. So I've got my red LED. Uh, you'll also need a resistor. So I've got my resistor already put into my um, in line in my wires here. So I've got my jump cables 
uh, with a resistor in the middle. And you can use any resistance that you like. Uh, the lower, the better, really, for what we're doing today. And it's just so that we don't pop our LED. Uh, and then I've got some female, female jumper cables. Um, and that's about all we need for this one. It's a really simple project. Have you got those things with you? Amazing. OK, so I'm going to go like nice and slowly and I'll explain everything that I'm doing. Um, and remember, everybody watching at home, that you can pause and rewind the video while we're working if you need a bit more time. And this video will be available on our YouTube channel in perpetuity. So are we ready? Yes, let's do it. I'm excited. Awesome. So with our Raspberry Pi, the first thing we want to do whenever we're hooking up an LED uh, is to test the LED first. So we want to connect it up to our pin one, which is this one here, uh, closest to my finger. And we're going to hook it up to that, and then we're going to run it to an earth pin just to make that circuit, which will then show us the electricity running through it. So we're going to connect up to my leg of my LED, and then I'll connect my jumper cable here. So that's on the, you'll notice, the long leg of my LED. So this is the one that I want to go to my positive pin. So I just connect that to pin one, and then I'm going to connect the other one. Oh, I see. Yeah. Reese the Great in the chat is really excited you're making stuff. <laughs> Reese says, yeah, I like making stuff. We do too, Reese. We do too. Okay. And Mr. C, which model of the Raspberry Pi do you have? We've got a question in the chat. Uh, so I'm, I've got the 4B. Um, so I've got the Pi 4, one of the newest ones at the moment. I've got some other ones. I've got Pi 3s and things here at my desk. Um, but for this one, like, we're using the Pi 4. So. And I'll just pop that here onto pin number 6, which is an earth pin. To here and you'll see that see so now that i've got my circuit closed my led is lit up so if i pull that wire off and then reattach the cable that's my led working so i've tested my light bulb i know that it's working and that what i'm going to, have to do is uh, going to be you know going to actually happen i haven't got a popped led or anything like that and the next thing is i'll take it off pin one and we're going to use pin 21 in our code so i'm just going to connect it to that that's the one at the furthest end on the outside rail of your raspberry pi so we're just going to connect that up and I'll pop my LED back down. Okay. So we've got that there. And you'll see that I'm VNCing into my Pi as well. So we'll just pop that up on screen now. So a VNC, Christina, uh, for those at home <clears throat> as well, is basically I'm connected via the network. So using my Wi-Fi, you'll see that there's no cables connected to my Raspberry Pi here. Uh, I don't have a keyboard or anything connected to it, but I can drive it across the network from my laptop here. So what you're seeing is a representation of my Raspberry Pi's desktop, and I've got my Scratch open here. And so the first thing I want to do with my Raspberry Pi Scratch is open up this simple electronics extension. So this is the one we're going to use today because it's nice and straightforward. And you see it adds all these brilliant Sage blocks here for me that I can start popping into my code. And so we're using pin 21 today. So I'm going to come down here and make sure the LED that I'm toggling is 21. OK, fantastic. And so I'll bring that out here, pop it in my workspace. And so if I just click that now, you see that my LED is going on and off as I toggle my LED. So I know that block is going to work. OK, so I can just click that block on my workspace and it actually does what I want it to do. My LED goes on and off. Cool. But that's a bit boring, right? I don't want to have to click it. I want it to do something interesting. So to do that, I'm going to make it loop. All right, so I go to my control, and I'm going to grab a forever block and just pop that around the outside there. Come on. Does that want to drag over? <laughs> oh, there we go. We got a bunch of them. I've got a whole bunch of them all at once. <laughs> Classic. OK. So there we go, forever toggle LED. Uh, and then I just want it to wait for a second. So that one there. And rather than wait one second, I'm going to have it wait a random amount of time. So I'm going to have it like flicker, essentially. So I'm going to pop that in here and tell it that I want you to wait for 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 of a second. And then my events blocks, I'm going to use this green flag. Let's do when green flag clicks. So that's all the code we need to make it work. And you see I've got, again, LED 21 is the important thing in my code. That's the pin we have the light connected to. You can use any number you want, but 21 is nice and easy to get to. It's an easy pin to find. So we click the green flag, and you'll see my LED starts flickering. Oh, awesome. Cool, right? Yeah. So for folks at home, make sure you tested your LED first. So if your LED worked and now you've set up your circuit and you've got your code running and maybe your light isn't blinking, check that circuit. And I think, Mr. C, I see you, you're holding it up. Can you show folks, there's two um, legs, right, on the LED. One's actually that's longer right, yeah. than the other. So and that's an important part of the circuit. So let's see, we've got the long one. 
which one that one is has to be connected um, to your 21 pin, right? That's correct. Yep. And the short leg, the other leg is the one that goes back to your ground or your earth pin. And so I've used pin number six for that. So if you go on the outside rail, it's the third pin down. So I'll just lift my pipe a little closer to the camera so you can see my setup. Nice. And they can know those ground pins too is, um, well, actually, yeah, it's the third pin on the right side. I have, I realized I have a little, uh, what's it called an attachment that that tells me <laughs> which ones oh, nice. they got are. Oh, nice, got one of the pin labels. Yeah, those are cool, those are super helpful. And so once you've got that code going with your little LED bulb bouncing off the GPIOs, then you can basically do anything that you want with it. Um, and so in the spirit of having something wearable, to talk to Jessica today, I've gone and like made myself a little <gasps> t-shirt. <gasps> no! Oh, I, I can't. <laughs> right? Oh, my cable's just popped off. But yeah, so that was it. We've got a wearable shirt now with a light heart light that lights up. And that's um really easy to do with your GPIO pins and not too much code at all. So I hope everybody else managed to get their one flashing at home if you're working alongside us on your Raspberry Pi. How's yours, that's Christina? Amazing. Good. I've got it down here and I'm plugging in, finishing up my circuit and going to add the code. Fingers crossed. Let me hope I'm touching the wrong mouse. All right, let's run it. Is it working? <gasps> yes, it's working. I can't pick it up. It's working. <laughs> nice, well done. So think, something I have, I got some uh, space fabric. So I'm thinking of maybe awesome. making like a little bag and maybe yeah. adding in some lights. So then like the stars will twinkle. I think that Super could be cool. really neat with LEDs. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get some, I've got some um, so like a uh, conductive thread here in the workshop. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Pico maybe and run a bunch of LEDs off of it into a wizard's hat. And then I'll like get all the stars to sparkle in my wizard hat for like Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. That'd oh, that's cool. so amazing. I yeah, love, yeah, that. I love that. that. So much. I'm curious for folks, like what, how, how have you made some fun wearable, um, <laughs> on wearables at home? Let us know what you've done and we'd love to shout you out for it. I think, oh no, my light stopped. Wait, let's see. Oh, that's because I put it on repeat. So forever loop. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's it. Mine's, mine's still going just because of the forever loop. But if you had it, like you could set it up to be the space bar and go like 20 times and then stop so that you could have an activated one. Anything you can do. Once you've got the LED flashing off of a pin, what you do with it is totally up to you. It's all just about the scratch code then and it can make anything that you like. Yeah. We got a question. Where does the resistor go? Can you clarify where it goes in the circuit? Doesn't matter. Um, so if you think about the electricity running through it, so if you think that all your components are connected by a piece of string that is running through their hands, okay? So this string is always running and it's sliding between their hands and that's the current. If you take a resistor, that's like putting somebody holding the string and they clamp down a little to slow that current. And so wherever you put them inside that circuit, doesn't matter. It will slow down the circuit, especially when we're working at this is a simple level. Wherever you put your resistor is absolutely fine before or after your LED makes no difference. Awesome. Thank you. And great question from S. <laughs> great question. So yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Cool. This is so much fun. <laughs> so I'd like to, I got my little light down here. I'll have to set my. I know, I know. It's super diverting, up. right? Once you get it going, I keep thinking of more things to add to it. Like I've got my flickering randomly, and there's so many things I could do with it, like make a little cloud and like they had a thunderstorm and sound effects in it. All sorts of things, but all these things for coolest projects, right? So if you guys at home make something amazing, you could enter it into coolest projects, right, Christina? Yes. One of the yes. amazing programs we're running. Yes, coolest projects. Check it out. Coolestprojects.org is one of our amazing programs for young people all around the world can showcase what they've made with code. Idea registration launched this month. So go to coolestprojects.org and check it out. And thank you so much, Mr. C. This simple like electronics extension on Scratch makes this a really straightforward way to get an LED to blink. I absolutely love yeah, it. Yeah, it's a really nice little extension. It's very simple. It doesn't require a lot of like forethought or understanding. You can just grab it, pop it in, and start going with electronics. And it was great to see so many many people this week jumping in the chat and asking us all sorts of great questions. Shout out to Supreet, uh, shout out to Reese the Great. Loads of people here doing amazing things. Thank you for your contributions to the discussion. Uh, and thank you to Jessica for coming on this evening. I learned loads about e-textiles and the future of fabrics. You should check out her site, which is the URL here, jstan.co. Have a look, amazing stuff on there. I'm going to have an attempt at her uh, modular armor. Oh yeah, I want to check it out too. It's such a shame that we're done, but that's all we have time for this week. Though you can always get in touch with us. Send us an email at dmah at raspberrypi.org to ask us a question, show us something cool you've made. If you're working on a project you want to share it with us, tweet a picture of it to us at raspberry underscore pi. We'd love to see it. 
Absolutely. And before you go, make sure everybody to like and subscribe so you're the first to know when we go live and you'll get all the updates, all the content on our channel as we release it. Remember, we're focusing on supporting young makers around the world with fresh new content every week. Thank you all for being here for the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Digital Making at Home live stream again. We're back next week, same time, once again, with loads more digital making. Until then, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you later.